Hello guys, welcome back to a brand new video. Welcome back to another renovation vlog. These are fast becoming my favorite videos to film because it obviously means we have made progress, we have updates with the house, and we are one step closer to moving upstairs, which I cannot wait for. Honestly, the desire for a bathroom, for a wardrobe, for drawers is just like nothing else I've ever felt before. So I'm very excited, we are so close. This past couple of weeks since the last renovation vlog, we have made progress in terms of painting, skirting boards. It's really starting to get to the stage now where I am very excited to start picking samples and paint colors and all sorts honestly we have so many different samples here in front of me that i've been collecting over these last few weeks that um i should probably run through them because some of them i can get rid of because we've already made our decision so for instance tiles i've got some tiles there which we no longer need so yeah i'm very excited we've got our flooring chosen as well for the top floor still to finalize carpet but that is the last stage so that will probably be in the next renovation vlog and then before long we're going to start decorating the space in terms of like actually styling it putting furniture in it's very exciting so yeah i thought i would um just briefly sit down with you at the start of today's renovation vlog because i actually have a sponsor for today's video which is skillshare some of you may have heard me talk about skillshare before during like lockdown period and everything i love just learning there's something about when you're in school that is just ugh. the idea of learning for me was just no no thank you but now I'm out of school and there's no pressure. I just, I don't know, I like learning a new skill. I wanna pick up my piano again. Essentially what Skillshare is, it's an online learning community with thousands of different classes across all different sectors. So I've just got set in front of me the class that I have currently been doing and it is called Everyday Minimalism, Find Calm and Creativity in Living Simply. It's by a lady called Erin Boyle. And she's, even just her voice is so calming. I'm just loving it. And it's all about stripping back why less is more what to let go what to let in and easing stressful areas which can have like a ripple effect into your everyday life so i really want to incorporate that into when i'm doing the upstairs i'm not just going to take everything up and live with it for however many years in clutter zone no so anyway if you also are feeling creative and want to learn more then you can subscribe today and what's more the first 1000 of my viewers to click the link in the description box will get a one month free trial no contract or anything if you try it and don't like it, you can cancel any time yeah i thought i would mention that here within this video and now let's head back in time to a couple of weeks ago where we last left off the previous renovation vlog just watching in fact i'm gonna pause it but on tv pause there is a program oh here we go farm ball inside the posh paint factory it's called it's on uh channel five catch up excuse the state of the place barney always has this moment in the evening where he literally just empties his toy basket throws all his toys all over the show and then always picks his favourite Ikea teddy to suck in bed and just cuddle for a bit before he comes to sleep either on the sofa or if it's quite hot he'll usually go and sleep on the kitchen floor. But anyway I thought I would mention this for anyone else looking to maybe redecorate or um, has an interest in Farrumble paints. It's actually really interesting so it's well worth a watch but I'm, I'm sat here with this um, like sample card as they're talking about colors I'm like finding it and having a look and seeing because they go into someone's house and redo the walls in different paint colors and actually one contender which I didn't really think about before but seeing it on TV is this one schoolhouse white it looked beautiful there's a hint of gray to it and I also looked at slipper satin before but now having seen this one on the walls, I actually think this one might have a little bit too much pink in it. So maybe something like that is what we're after. Um, but it's really important, I think, to find a good white in the places that we are going white. So yeah, 
it's really interesting so yeah i just thought i would mention that if you also fancy some kind of a program to watch you stumped for choice and you think this might be interesting for you it's about a 45 minute program so yeah i'm enjoying it so far whilst this one's sucking his teddy and falling asleep the cuteness oh my goodness i can't even deal with this this color that they're actually talking about this blue did you see that will now test Nate's paint for its color, coverage, and thickness using a variety of stringent quality tests. So interesting. But this color that they're talking about or showing how they make is called, uh, well, it's this one, 281. How would you pronounce that? It's Stooky Blue. You'd never think that, would you? It looks like Stiffkey. Stiffkey blue, they say the amount of people that always say, I want a pot of stiffkey blue, please. And it's stooky blue. Of all these colours, this was quite interesting. Where is it? Oh, this one here. Mizzle is in between mist and drizzle. And they said, you just say that, people already know what kind of a colour it's going to be. And also the only one that they uh, not have not sort of released the story behind as to why they chose the colour name is possibly one of their big sellers, Elephant's Breath. They're not releasing why that they've called it Elephant's Breath. I feel like that's a bit of a marketing ploy, but that's another popular colour. Cornforth White. There you go, so you must be warm tonight. It's gone on the kitchen floor. Barney, can you speak? <laughs> you have to come and do it next to me? I've not got any treats, I'm afraid. Ooh, kisses for the camera. Can you speak? <coughs> yeah. Oh. <laughs> love you. I love you. So now in the main bathroom, we have the mat laid down. We've had the deliveries of the shower trays. So the plumber is coming back in a few days to fit these trays in all three bathrooms at which point then a couple of days later the tiler is arriving to tile up all of the shower unit the floor in here and obviously the other bathrooms as well i've pretty much just moved all of the bathroom stuff within here for now because it's quite a nice open clean space and then soon as well the painters and decorators are going to come and start prepping and priming this wall to you've got to get it like so perfect before you can actually paint it so yeah we've got them booked in to come and do that as well so all things are moving forward we're so close now we've got through here the master which is obviously the same as it was before this spare room has had a little transformation, if you will, through the ensuite. So obviously this is the ensuite that we're having a sliding door attached with this wall like via a rail or something or slide across um, because of the space of the ensuite. So the actual ensuite we've decided to paint and just tile the shower unit and the floor again. So uh, we decided to have it all plastered and once this is dried then we can um, get it painted or prepped for painting anyway. But you can tell here the difference in color when the plaster is drying. Obviously this one, I mean, you can touch it. It is dry, but to be fully dry, once it's that color is when you can then paint it. Another thing that we discussed with the painter is the actual staircase. Now we were quite keen to keep this original staircase. I like the shape of it. I like the spindles, I like the handles, ev like the railings, everything. Obviously it needs some TLC and because of the age of this property, you can't just simply burn off this paint because of lead poisoning. So we have decided that they're gonna remove the spindles, keep the banister I think, and just have little bits like this repaired. Sand all of that back. Look at the color as well, it's like beige pink, beige pink. <laughs> Really random. As for this top room, we are pretty much ready to, again, this one is finalized and ready to fit for the bathroom. So obviously we're keeping all of these spaces open, as you guys know. The only door to go in this top floor is literally here, hence the open um, exposed frame for ready for the casings to be fitted, which we have ordered all the skirts, the 
architraves for the doors and also the door casing. So they are en route. This little leaves is looking good. Great storage space in here, and we are gonna get lighting in here as well so that it's nice and lit up. Skirts all the way around so that it kind of fits in with the room. Obviously, it's gonna continue through. We've got the section here plastered because we can't plaster. We did have a try. Plasterer did show us what it looks like plastered onto moisture board, but as you can tell, it's not the best finish. It crumbles off, it's not ideal. So he said either tile this full wall and tile this wall and then this is our shower unit in here um, or if you're just wanting to tile the shower unit like in a different tile or whatever and then the glass door come out here then this section which would need to be plastered ready to be painted he would be able to cut out the moisture boards replace it with a dry board ready to be plastered again and we thought for the time and effort, we've already ordered the tiles ready to fit that whole wall anyway. We're just going to go ahead with the original plan of tiling all that wall and this wall. So we've scrapped the idea of the green tiles, which is a shame because I do think it would look beautiful in here. And then last but not least, this area is all finished again, ready to be painted. Just need to cork these edges in here and then actually have that beam sanded back as well, which I think the joiner will do. We've also got the joiner fitted in, not the joiner, the flooring guy to come and fit the hardwood floor up here that we've ordered. That's in a couple of weeks time and it's going to run throughout the entire of this top floor. The carpet that we have on the first floor will run up, up the staircase and to this section here. I mean, you can just call me a fashionista with this little combo that I've got going on. Oh, I mean, we've got this poor little guy who's got his, his post-op vest on, which I talked about on Instagram, so I'm not gonna talk about it here. But we also have this as our reality at the moment yeah the window that was smashed has now fallen through so we're just taping up so that we're protected and the glass doesn't at least come onto this side of the room but this isn't ideal what did you say we're living what was the word i used squalor squalor we are living in squalor now <laughs> It's not that bad, is it? It's all part of the journey. I'm thinking about putting a hole in it so, it, so the, the air just, it's allowed to come through it. Okay, you know? do whatever you feel. I mean, we could just get, you know, a house renovated. Oh yeah, that's gonna be a nightmare. Imagine, we're gonna have to sleep with that sound. Really nice. And no, I like silence, please. You all right, buddy? Watch, careful. Did you see the photo I sent of you? No. Of his or won't. No. I'm thinking this next clip is going to be pretty hard to film because we've had the mist coat done on the walls just to start fresh, ready for painting. Look how bright it is. <laughs> so, wow, what a difference a bit of paint makes. I tell you what, it makes the banister look filthy. <laughs> So, I'm going to flip you around, we're probably going to go in and out of focus quite a lot because it finds it really hard to focus on something on just a white wall because there's obviously nothing to focus on. But, it's looking good, bright, which I'm loving. So this is what the bathroom is currently looking like. We are experiencing a little bit of difficulty with this shower. Oh look, it's already out of focus. There we go, I'm just going to have to keep my hand in frame. So the plumbers, when they fitted the shower trays, they accidentally went through one of these um, moisture boards, but also the fit of the tray. We've decided to go on top of this with another moisture board anyway, like a thicker one to help support the big tiles, which to be fair, the big tiles help support anyway, but also just to have that added support and also just be able to kind of fill that gap without the need of a tiler kind of the tiler fixing it so at some point we're going to get this done so the tiler is actually due here tomorrow so i think we're going to get him to start on the other two bathrooms first and apart from that everything around here is looking nice and white and bright through here to my filming room again nice and white and bright and what this mist coat allows you to do is see where all the little imperfections are the scuffs anything that needs filling and sorting before um, the actual paint goes onto the walls. And through here, well, I mean, there's not really much to show you other than just white walls everywhere, which honestly makes me very excited. Oh, it's so 
exciting. And then he's just kind of left the areas where we're going to be tiling. So that is obviously the stark difference between plaster and white. And I'm not going to lie, I do quite like a colour like plaster, although it's a little bit pinky for me, I think. It's more of like a salmon pink. I want like a true beige in some of the rooms. Shower tray from Myra has been elevated slightly in this bathroom just for the help with wastage. I actually really like the waste on these showers because you've not got like a big chrome circle. We've gone for the same in all, all um, three bathrooms. It's just like a hidden waste like that. Well, it's not hidden, but it's just a, well, you can see what it is, like a little slot, which I quite like. So there's no big chrome or brass uh, waste that you need to put in. This is just 800 by 800, this one. Then I'll take you upstairs to the top floor. See what I mean by the banister, how filthy it looks now in comparison to the white walls. So up here we have obviously all this extra added detail, the beam and everything's been painted with this mist coat. It's just like a white emulsion that they go over everything with. We just need to get that beam sanded back and either varnished or... Tom did mention about painting it white. I quite like the... Ex if we're having it as an exposed beam, which we obviously are, then maybe just sanding it back and putting a varnish on it, maybe like a dark wood varnish so that it kind of stays that sort of color. And just see how we go, oh my God, it's so gray outside. Oh, I feel like autumn is coming. So our bedroom, our temporary bedroom downstairs with the smashed glass panel, got it boarded up with cardboard and it gets colder at night now, which I, I don't mind it being cold, but it's just to the point now where we're like, get me upstairs, get me a wardrobe, get me a proper bedroom, get me a bathroom as well. I'm so ready for it. But this has been good progress and it's only a mist coat. It's not even like we've properly painted yet, but it already makes a huge difference. And then we've also got the joiner booked in this week. So he's going to be, as soon as the skirting boards and door architraves have arrived, he's gonna start fitting them. We want the paneling done and we're only gonna panel, I think the corridors, master and my filming room we've actually had the banister done as well and what he essentially used was a johnson's undercoat water-based primer so this is just literally to um he sanded it all back and painted it with this undercoat so that we could see any imperfections any bits that need filling and sorting out any like more sanding or any issues like these sort of bits here obviously will all be filled and then, um, and even like under here and everything. And then we can actually choose the paint. And actually, I was thinking of black candles, white spindles, but I quite like the all white look, which I suppose is no surprise, really. We've also had some paint samples, um, not arrive. I've got some from Lick on order, which I'm loving the look of. But I also popped to B&Q to pick up these from Valspar and also a little tester pot they basically duped stony ground from this book so i gave them this book they photographed that color there and i'm thinking this color may be in this master bedroom what do you guys think i feel like we're having paneling and with it being the master bedroom i feel like a dark color would make it quite cozy i mean it's not dark dark but a nice dark warm beige but yeah i'm gonna wait till the lick paints arrive and then i also really like this for all the white walls the fresh narcissus and anything goes is the other one that i looked at and i kind of copied schoolhouse white and slipper satin for these two which are pretty pretty close so yeah i think i'm leaning more towards this one for all the white walls but we'll see i mean i've still got some more samples to arrive so i'm yet to decide but um oh my god this is all the exciting stage for me this is just oh, so exciting and if you were interested this is what he's used to do all the mist coat it's just contract matte white just like a standard white emulsion we have one spindle here that actually needs repairing and then if if i just come back all these little bits like this can be filled on the banister. These bits here down at the bottom. So this is exactly why we do an undercoat so we can see exactly what bits need filling and sanding back. And to be honest with you, once it's painted, I'm okay with a few little imperfections, but obviously these bits just need sorting. I don't think we're gonna be able to have a runner up the stairs because they're quite narrow. We were thinking about maybe just keeping it full carpet 
Um, so it'll be the same carpet throughout this entire floor, both staircases and the landing upstairs, and then hard flooring on the top floor, and then obviously underfloor heating and hard flooring downstairs throughout the whole of downstairs, when we eventually get to that, of course. Hello, it has been a couple of days, I think, since I last vlogged. We have an update. We have the lick samples that have just arrived. I'm just gonna pop you there and show you the colors that I have decided to pick up samples of. These are amazing, by the way. I think it's about six pound for six samples and they stick on the wall, so there's no need for painting, but you can also take it off and then move it to different areas within the room, different rooms, so that you can get an idea of what the paint's gonna look like in different lightings, which is everything. Because honestly, the amount of samples that I have seen and thought, yeah, love that. And then you actually put it up against the wall and I'm like, ooh, maybe not. Like maybe too much pink or too much yellow and looking like magnolia. So I have ordered six samples. Let's have a look and see what we've got. Oh my God, I love that one. That could be the one for this room. Take this lightly, order the samples yourself because in camera, it might not show up exactly how it does in real life. So this one is number white 04. I think I'm already gonna rule this one out because it is quite, I was gonna say quite gray and I've just held it up against the wall and I quite like it. This one is white 03, which in comparison to white 04 is a much warmer, creamier white. Let's have a look at this. I mean, this is just comparing it against just a white, matte white emulsion that's a brilliant white. See, that might look, it's definitely warm. I do really like that one though. That is a good contender. White 01 is actually a pretty true white. I'd say it's very similar to the one that is currently on the walls. Yeah, identical. And then I've got three beige kind of greyish colors, <laughs> which we have this one, which is beige 03. Definitely a more cool toned one, which I think will be, again, I was gonna say too cool toned, but when you look at it on the wall, it's nice. No, it's Maybe a bit too grey. Um, and then these two, I love both of these. So this is beige one and grey. That's beige one and that's greyish one. Love beige, but I actually thought it was going to be darker than that. Then again, when you compare it to the white that's currently on the wall, it does look quite dark. Ooh. What do we think? I love this one. So the greyish actually has a bit of green in it. I feel like that might be nice in a different space in the spare room. This one could be the winner for this room. If I just hold it up against that wall and it's the light comes from this side so it's a lot brighter here. Let's just stick it on here for now. It is quite dark actually, which is what I want in this room. I want this room to feel really cozy. We're gonna have a white radiator in this room, so that will contrast quite nicely and work quite well with it, I feel. So yeah, this is beige number one. And so you can just peel it off, take it to a different space, stick it back on. Genius. I did consider if we're panelling, half panelling the hallways, maybe doing a darker colour on the bottom of the panelling, the bottom half, keep the top half white. So in comparison, you can see it's a bit darker and a bit more green in it. This would be nice in here. Ooh, or maybe in the spare room. See, it looks more grey in that light. Honestly, this is the best invention ever. I was just going to put it there and there's a little dead spider hanging there. I'll just put it here. Decisions, decisions, what to do. I'm just on my phone, but I thought I'd just document this before running up, before running and trying to find my camera, which I don't know where it is. I'm just masking out the rough areas where we're gonna panel. Um, I might actually just pencil on the walls, roughly. I've decided over here, rather than having two, I think it'd be quite nice to have one big panel here and here, so that in the middle here, we could potentially have a piece of artwork or a mirror, possibly. We've also had the Arctos fitted, modelled beautifully by my boyfriend, Thomas. Oh. 
I am just going to show off the architrave, like a QVC model. Oh, that's the door opening. Are we opening into the bedroom? Yeah. And then, oh, flick on the lights and oh, lights come on. They are, they are <laughs> Good, aren't they? Quite wide, which we like. Now, I was after potentially going in with the lick paint, the beige 01, with the whole of the skirting boards, architraves, everything covered. But Tom pointed out, he think it might look a bit lost here where this meets the room. And you can see that though. So, yeah, so maybe we'll just stick with white architrave skirts and coving and just keep the actual walls, the beige color. But I do really like that look, so maybe one day. We've had a delivery, very exciting one. And also along the staircase, so this is all of our skirting boards, um, door casings, architraves and everything. We do still need to buy our internal doors. We've got the casings to fit the openings and then we're just gonna kind of buy the doors to fit. So yeah, so exciting. This is how high the skirting boards is, is, are. They're 220 mil, which is fairly high, but I definitely wanted to keep in, you know, like stay in keeping with the period feature of the property and skirting boards, high skirting boards was definitely one of them. Obviously ignore all the dirt and everything, but you can see here, part of the original oh hello there sweetheart hi i'll show you this one in here obviously just ignore the bad paintwork but barney sit down the original skirting boards look like so and they've had some of it replaced like you can see there i've gone for a style more like the original and yeah i just love them so these are quite high they're the similar sort of height and then if you can see the coving oh god look at that bad paintwork that we did when we first moved in look at it there oh my god um so this coving we definitely are keeping our eyes peeled for coving very similar to this because i'm just obsessed with it and i think we're just gonna have it at least on the top two floors just in my bedroom sorry i should say my filming room and the master bedroom very exciting stuff in it barn yes yeah, so exciting you look so excited don't you joiner has been in <gasps> to fit some of the skirting boards today which is so exciting so it honestly transforms a room when you've got skirting boards fitted obviously they're not finalized and you can still see the gap we've still got the underfloor and the carpet to go in but we've gone for very traditional style i mean you can see the edging there where he's cut it oh man doing down there barney what are you doing oh look at him with his collar good boy you stay there master he has finished so all the little edges around the bay window are done it honestly looks so good okay it's not quite finished but we're getting there. So he obviously just has a little bit left uh, to finish off in terms of the skirting boards and then the doors, the actual frames. This one's already done, as you can tell, in terms of this bit is on, ready for the door casings to be fitted and the doors hung. But the rest of them still need to be done like that. You know, you can just see the brick. So there is still quite a bit of joinery work to do. Um, but yeah, we're getting there. I feel like every day that we have someone in, it's like, progress, yes, progress. We're so close. We're still undecided on paint colors. Even Tom said, he was like, why don't we just keep it all white? Like, at least for now, and then maybe live in it for a bit, style it up, keep it bright and white and clean, and be able to style the rooms with a blank canvas especially as some of them like this one's going to have panelling as a bit of a feature and just keep it bright and white and then if in future even if it's just a couple of months later a couple of years later we decide we want to repaint or change up the colors or white's a bit boring clinical we want to change things up a bit then we can do that so i mean i'm not mad at that idea because obviously you know me i like my neutrals and i like everything white and bright and airy and that's exactly what it is right now but i do also like the idea of warmer tones and i don't know i don't know i don't know Clearly, 
fuel needed for this renovation. I'm just mapping out doing a kind of um, very rough idea and kind of style of how we want the panelling to be. I've decided that in this filming room of mine, I'm actually just gonna panel the one wall just because it'll feed nicely into the corridor which is panelled. Yeah, I just think it'd be quite nice as a feature wall in this room. I'm obviously gonna keep this room nice, bright and white for filming purposes. It'll just be really easy to work with. But I thought I could have like this as a backdrop. Then obviously our wardrobes, well my wardrobes are gonna go there and there. So then that could be a backdrop. I'm gonna have some kind of table unit with lamps and maybe pampas grass there. So that could be a filming backdrop. And then at some point around here, maybe some kind of like coffee table that I can style up or um, sofa beds, maybe some kind of mirror, huge big mirror that I can take outfit pictures in or whatever. Then I still need to finish off the little panels and decide how many I want along this long stretch. Maybe, I quite like odd numbers, so maybe five. We've got this little one here. I've kind of started to do the stairs so that again he hasn't fit the skirts yet there but so that he has an idea that I want it kind of running down. My little mock-up for the joinery, uh, the joinery, for the joiner who should be back tomorrow so I need to do like a click and collect hopefully from B&Q and get the dado rail and panels for that hopefully so that it's here by tomorrow so that you can crack on with that. We also need to order the doors. He's fit the door casings, which is great. We've had a bit of issue with this one in here with the bathroom being on an angle. So he's had to fill it, but the issue isn't the door casing. It's what we do with the architrave because obviously this is what the architraves usually look like. However, here on this section, it, the wall is at an angle to the current architrave. So maybe we might just get a narrower architrave for this side of the door just like a very thin kind of plain panel just to box it in yeah that is what they are meant to look like and I love them oh my god I can't wait for my paneling to be on the walls as well so that is where we are at to date we have lots of exciting times ahead I'm honestly so excited to get upstairs done just so excited but yeah thank you so so much for watching today's renovation vlog stay tuned for another one very soon we've got lots planned in this week so i'm probably going to be uploading renovation vlogs maybe a little more often if you guys want to see them and obviously if you want to stay up to date real time rather than these sort of videos which were in accumulation over a couple of weeks then you can head to my instagram homeware account for frankton home where i highlight every single week the progress and i'm obviously updating you live in real time in the moment so yeah be sure to head over there if you want to keep up to date don't forget to check out skillshare should you wish and don't forget the first thousand of you who click on the link will get that one month free thank you so so much for watching i hope to see you all very very soon in my next renovation vlog and my next video plenty coming your way with autumn fast approaching i hope you all have a lovely rest of your day and i hope to see you all very very soon bye guys